since that time, in two years, because of the things that we, along with your congressional members, along with the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works, have gone to come together and looked at, there has been a change. It may not be the exact change or the, the change to change everything, but it has been a change to affect what was actually done. There are no administrative fees. It's not the grand answer to everything, but it is the answer to show that the system works. Well, you know how back in the day you allowed a, allowed a landowner to sell an entire subdivision under the flow of deep. Now again, we have to deal with it. Again, as I've said that, before, that is, that is the Corps of Engineers is not responsible for identifying and saying what is it, and we, they were not then either. We have the same information, sir, the same information to show what we were and were not. I'm sorry if you want to take this on even more after we can do that, but I would much rather answer anybody else's question, and we can answer, we can talk about this later on. Yes. So the Corps is responsible for the lake, correct? Yes. What about the 60 years of erosion that has settled in the middle and has pushed up these I-34 marks? Bridget, I don't know that, that has... Oh, so we haven't had any erosion in 60 years? I'm not saying anything about erosion, but you're talking about still within the actual lake itself, correct? That's what yeah. you're talking about. And Our I'm job sure is to had pushed these lines up. No, I'm not, have no, not pushed any lines up. The filtration of the lake is another story. That's a whole other issue. Um, the 534 is a contour line, and where the 534 contour line is, and when you look at it on the aerial imagery, nowhere where that 534 air imagery is has it changed. Now it has changed in places where landowners built their property up where landowners hauled in dirt and built the property up that that in those areas yeah it did change some but siltation from siltation from the lake no could it not be dredged wouldn't that help the landowners as far as the lake flooding let, let me let me tell you about dredging i'm originally from the uh, from the st louis district Mississippi Valley. And, and are y'all familiar with dredging along the Mississippi River? Not so much on the Ohio, but along the Mississippi River. And, and I'm an agronomist, soil and plant science. I, I know a lot about dirt <laughs> and, and rivers and waterways. And one thing that dredging does, and it's a, it's a known fact, is it makes the problem worse. It makes the problem worse. And you may be going, why? That don't make sense. It, 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 when you take material out and you remove it out, the banks underneath what you're not seeing just continue to slow. That's why on the Mississippi River, we dredge every year, some years more than others. Why? Because that operation got started years ago to keep the riverways open. So it's a non-stop dredging activity. And you may be thinking, well, oh my gosh, the Mississippi River, it's the mighty Mississippi. Doesn't that just take all the silt downstream and deposit it down there in Louisiana? Yes, it does. But it also just keeps building in the channels. So no matter how much dredging we do, it doesn't help. It's an ongoing, every year, awful, repetitive cycle that we are doing for the sake of dredging. I understand your point, I, I hear you. I know there are places along Rough River where back in the 50s and the 60s, it was, it was a creek. It was a deep creek. It was a deep creek. Now, over the years, the waterway has done exactly what a waterway does. Rivers, all rivers, not just lakes, all rivers have still problems. A lot of that has to do with adjacent landowners. A lot of the problem does have to do with adjacent landowners. And siltation coming off farms, yards, no riparian corridor. Corridor, what I mean by that is mowing right up to the water's edge creates an erosion problem because there's no buffer there to stop the wave action from eating away at the bank 
or a runoff that goes into a river. So that's the gist of that. And I'm sorry that's long winded, but that's my degree. <laughs> well, I have another question. And what if we want yearly the flowage easement purchase? Um, a lot of the deeds say 1952, 1955. There may be some other years, but those, those two stick out of the ones I've dealt with right now were 52 and 55, with 55 being the predominant year. And 58, sorry, thank you, 58. So it varies, it just depends on when they got around to doing those easement acquisitions. Again, all of you in this room, if you want a copy of the easement that is impacting your property, the legal description of that flowage easement, call me. I will get it to you. I will give it to you. I'll email it to you or I'll put it in the mail to you or I'll put it in your hands, whichever way you want. And if I don't have it in my system at the office, real estate's great. All I gotta do is send them an email and they find it and they send it to me. But these, these deeds are recorded in the courthouse. And I'm not going to lie to you, it does take some digging sometimes to find it. Especially when the tracks have been just lots of blocks developed on it. And figuring out, and it takes up more than one track, so we have to figure out where your lot is in regard to the original track. So we have to do our history lesson and find where the original track wanted in Well, could I just add to, to clarify my own mind? And I understand both sides that, you know, that it was, so uh, from the point of where the easements were purchased by the Corps of Engineers, then landowners who stole their property did not, I would say they did not do their due diligence in the sense of if you don't disclose that you have a leaky basement, you're, that they didn't disclose that they are. So I see what you're saying. And then I understand that you are not the government, and I thank you for your service for us, that you know that you have, have served us as citizens. So the people who are being told their $300,000 home, if it is in a scenario where it is destroyed by tornado or fire or flood, cannot rebuild, and they're all in that scenario if it's an entire subdivision, are you suggesting a class action lawsuit? Are you suggest what is their resolution? How can keep, keep in mind back to what I originally said, scenario B especially. You know, for years around this place, what was the yellow line? 534. Scenario C is 100% below that contour line of 534. So. So they're saying that they knew that going into it. I'm not saying they knew that. I, I can't get into their right, head. Right. I'm I don't know what that there is. That scenario, there's a possibility they knew going into it. Correct. But even the potentially the, the developer potentially knew that, and there's still the innocence of those who purchased and might not have done. Okay. I just. I've got to get this lady over here. Bless her heart. I am so sorry. <laughs> One question, quick question, then what is the time? I mean, I just talked about the surveyors being backed up, the health departments being backed up. Originally, we were told one year. What the one, yes, and what the one year, what we originally told folks was to begin resolution. What does that mean? That means you called Diane Stratton and you said, hey, Diane, I've called the health department. I've called the surveyor. They said it's going to be over a year or longer before they get around to me. So I need to know. I'll write your name down, I'll put it when I talk to you on my spreadsheet, I'll verify with whoever, like if you call the surveyor, I'll call him and say, hey, did you, do you have her on your list? He'll say, he or she will say yes. You've begun resolution. You've done what you need to do. My second question is a little dirtier. So <laughs> <laughs> let's talk poo. Okay, let's talk about poo. Because yeah. you keep saying, as long as you have a ver verified so, 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 yeah. you're fine. So what if you don't? If you don't, that's when you, I, I'm not a poo expert, and we, the Corps of Engineers, have decided that we are going to let the Kentucky Health Department deal with septic systems. So if they come out and they say, you don't even have a septic system, I don't, your poo's been going straight into the lake through the premises, or your septic system is failing. 
They will sit down with you and they will explain where you can put septic systems. <coughs> they do have systems that the Corps of Engineers has looked at and have agreed to go below 534. They are very expensive systems, I'm not going to lie to them. That and those systems, the health department has said it will be a last resort. People know that when the boats go in. So with those, in that case, if it's, let's for example, everything you own is below 534. And there's nowhere you own nothing about 534. And even if you did, there's nowhere to put a septic system. In that case, the health department will work with you with the systems that they have that are acceptable for being installed in the coastline. And that's the system they would require you to have. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's a whole bill in line. Yeah. Three, four times, and then they finally agree to lay all the way down to the Yeah. Okay. So, but if your structure, if your human habitable structure is above the 534 line, but your septic system is below, are you impacted at all? If if your structure is in low adjustment, but above 534, yeah, you you are impacted. You have a habitable structure in the flow adjustment. So you will have to request that the Corps of Engineers <coughs> release all of the restrictions of their flow adjustment above 534. Your septic system, you will get something from the health department verifying that it's a functioning system. Your septic system is fine, you stay there if they say it's a functioning, it's functioning properly system. Okay, we've, we've not had many that have failed. We've had a lot that were not existing, but we've not had well, any. Well, I mean, you know, we're talking, you know, some people yeah. do the outhouses. Yeah. I mean, you know, so you're talking about systems that, or places that have never yes. had a health department look at. I, I will, I cannot speak for the health department. I know they do have avenues and a process. If you cannot put in a septic system, say there's no option. Your only option is a holding tank. You will have to meet with them. They will exhaust all options for you. And then even though the state says holding tanks <coughs> is prohibited, they are prohibited unless you install certain types of holding tanks. And they will walk you through that process. We have one landowner with exactly that scenario. Everything they had was below 534. There was no options to put in a septic system. Wouldn't work there. No option. Not even a filling lane would work there. <clears throat> so what the health department did is get a waiver for them to install holding tanks. But the holding tanks have a very detailed monitoring system that the state requires that the landowner has to pay for. And an inspection process that the inspection by the health department. So there, 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 there's avenues. I'm going to have to direct you to the health department for that. I, I'm not a poo expert and we the Corps have decided we're not poo experts. So th they will be able to walk you through that process. If you need help, support, call me. I'll be glad to sit down with you and the health department and talk about it. Okay? Diane, what made the 534 the magic number? <laughs> I mean, where did that come from? That back when Rough River Lake was being acquired, right? They do what's called design memorandums. A lot of folks thought the government red line was an elevation line. Why did they think that? Because the original, the guide for the taking of public lands was 514. So that elevation was used as a guide, but then they bought it on a straight line, tangent lines. So that was their guide for acquiring government property around Rough River Lake. Those of you that are around Rough River Lake know that our government property is way below that in places and way above it in places. Flow adjustment's the same scenario. Back then, the engineers, when they were looking at how they were gonna build Rough River Lake, what land they needed for project purposes, what easement they needed solely for the purpose to back water up on, those were elevations the engineers did back then based on the data they had at the time is where they got those elevations from. 
And then they took those elevations and put them in what's called a design memorandum. And then the design memorandums went to Congress. Congress approved them. Then it came back down for the Corps of Engineers to go forth and build Rough River Lake. So that's kind of where that, that I, I wish I could tell, give you an exact how we got that number. I can't. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. It's just what they used back then to determine what they were going to acquire. Yeah, your spillways at what's 527, 525? Um, water starts running through the spillway at 524. 524, you're yeah. dams at 555. I'm just yes. curious why 534 really don't have it. It's got, he's asking why the dams at 555, the spillways at 524. It's all got to do with at the time when they were putting everything together, the size of our watershed. How much water was coming in? You know, they did studies to evaluate at different times of the year how much water was flowing into Rough River Lake. Then they took and they did their magic calculations and came up with those elevations. And then they built the dam. Yes. Those and then they built the dam based on those elevations. Okay. Um, he asked a question: When does water start flowing through the spillway? It starts flowing through the spillway at 524. I've had the question of, well, it only got up to 527.4, it'd never get any higher. That's not true. Think about your bathtub and your drain on your, or let's just talk about your sink and drain on your sink. If more water's coming in than what's going out through the emergency <coughs> spillway and through our gates, like in 2011, the lake's going to keep rising because there's more coming in than what can get out. So even though water starts flowing over that spill in the spillway at 524, it kept rising. It went as high as 527.4 when less was coming in than what was going out, so we finally started dropping. Has there been decisions made on the dam? As far as work starting? Correct. Uh, they, and they, what you're going to do? Yes, and that, that they brought up at the last public meeting that we had. Um, they do plan on building the new outlet works in a new water control tower on the office side of the dam and they're still going to do the cutoff wall they just have not let contracts out yet that's still a planning process keep in mind be a review. In, in regard to the dam work there will be a public meeting just like we do every year where we update the public on what's going on we typically have those in March or April so call the office ask if we've had anything decided on that um, watch our Facebook page, watch the paper, watch our district's web page. And like the commander said, she's going to look into how we make the community more aware of the public meeting. Maybe we need to do more than one news release. Maybe we need to send it out more than once to just kind of make sure the newspapers get it out in your area. But we're going to look at that. There has been a Facebook page started for just people like us that are dealing with this that if you just search rough ridge rough river easement 2019 there's a group of people and someone asked about a class action there they've actually contacted some lawyers to look at this from an outside i mean nothing against y'all but no, like we, we, don't take um, we, we would want to have people our lawyers on our side look at it too so yeah, um i've got a pack of cards for them if anyone wants to if you just search on facebook rough river easement 2019 it's just it's a growing group, but <laughs> we're trying to keep it somewhat civil, but like everybody's got like. Just a clarification. If you have a property, a habitable system of home, below the 534 line, but the easement is higher and their house is not in that easement, you can't touch them. Correct. She says, if I've got a house that's below elevation 534 and the government's slowage easement is below that elevation 534. Higher than that. Oh, actually, oh, actually above it and they don't include the lower area? Below. Yeah. No, the whole upper and lower boundary goes above the house. What she's referring to, and there is actually some cases of this, where our actual flowage easement is above the 534, that's where the lower taking line is, yeah. and the upper taking line is of the easement is actually above 534, where everything down here is, in, is not in flowage easement. And that, below the 534. Yes, but it's below the 534. We don't own easement there. We, we can't tell you what you can and can't do there. 
We do not have flow of diesel there. If it, if it is not in flow of diesel, the government has no authority there to tell you what you can and cannot do. We still limit it by female. It's a contract. It's a contract. You're still limited by the female elevation. You got to stay out of that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's a good point. You're still that that female elevation of 523.6. That can still impact you as far as flood insurance and things and, like and that. And that's where they've got we it on the map. Obviously, the elevation. Right. Yeah. So, so, so if they want to get a loan on the property, that does that does the bank will stop. That does the bank. There won't be invasion. It's way more than five hundred. Wait on. Well, if there is no easement. No, no. We look down and we get a letter. And let them come on and talk to them. I'm going to talk to them specific to their issue. Is there any more questions? If not, folks, I appreciate you coming out today, this evening. Thank you. If you have questions, you can grab one of us afterwards. If you want to come into the office and talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm more than willing to do that as well. So feel free to call me. The Rangers have information outside for you. Okay. 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 I wrote it down. Just ask to join, or yeah, I think you can, or yeah. or if you want to write like an email address down or, or Facebook or something, you can. We can. Oh, add oh you I'll in just or go when I get upstairs and get service. I'll do it. Yeah. Where Where is your place? Oh, Hidden Valley. <laughs> okay. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but Hidden Valley has gone. I mean, it's, it's, it depends on where you're at.